Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be going through the team reveal for round, what are we at, 10 now for AFL Fantasy. Then you'll have the super coach as well as the uh, tips um, in the next couple hours after this one gets uploaded. It's just a question if I can get this recorded and uploaded quick enough to get it um, rendered for sort of the uh, 12 cup time slot or whether this will be pushed back to one o'clock but um yeah before we get into this video remember to like and subscribe turn the notification bell on so you know when i upload and let's get into this video so um you will see straight away that there is a, a guy here in zach fisher that um probably some would say shouldn't be here but um we can actually do this a little bit differently so that but then again zach fisher being there doesn't really make any difference the only guy that i probably want here is I mean, it's just a matter of just these guys sort of playing in different positions. In Zach Fisher would go into the forward line, which will come in the next couple of weeks, as I do want to grab up potentially a Jeremy Sharp up to a Luke Ryan or something like that. That could actually be what I want to do. But then again, Luke, uh, sorry, Jeremy Sharp has such good job security that um he could be one to uh, use. Um, and also, yeah, Seth Campbell out one to two weeks, so I'm going to trade him now, even though because I do believe Will Graham will come back into the side um, eventually. And uh, sort of Seth Campbell is a guy that um, I think it's not going to do enough damage. Whereas I think if Will Graham comes back into the side, and this is the reason I'm not trading Will Graham at the moment, is because I believe Will Graham um, has the better scoring potential of 71 here. And yeah, I just think he can put up sort of 80s, potentially even 100 if he gets really tackling. So surprised he wasn't playing in these two games, but I reckon he'll be back sometime soon. Um, as yeah, I just think that their their midfield needs um extra some extra bodies in there sometimes with um it being what four I think there's only about four midfielders for Gold Coast at the moment, so I think he can easily be that fifth midfielder that they have. I'll just check quickly uh what their lineup is. As obviously they're playing tonight, so we know their uh their lineup. So let's just check what it is. Teams um Gold Coast they've got Miller Anderson. They've got Swallow playing there. I don't think Swallow plays too many games. I mean, he's played, what? He's played eight games so far this year, but I believe a lot of them have been subs. Um, let me just go here, here, and just go to Swallow. Um, yeah, you'll see here he's played one, two, three, four games as sub already. So, yeah, I think he could easily be in and out of the side. Yes, he's played all of their games, so all of their games bar one. So, yeah, I reckon he could be out of the side sometime um, soon anyway. Um, and letting uh, Will Graham get some games, but maybe they're just letting Will Graham get a couple games in the twos, um, keep him away from the Darwin Heat, um, and then he can get back into the side eventually. So yeah, I reckon he'll be a good piece later on in the year, as he's still got that really handy break even of 37 as well. So yeah, I'm going to be holding on to him. Um, so yeah, you've got Sheasel here, 101, and I'll be interested to see the North team sheets, as I'm interested to see if they bring in... a. Uh, Given McCurch is out, we've heard that, and he's out, I would suggest it's going to be, I think it's one to two, um, and it's very dependent how he pulls up on sort of the Monday, Tuesday, if they risk him on the uh, next week or not. Um, and so, yeah, I'll be interested to see what uh, the team sheet looks like, because if they bring in, say, um, if they basically swap um, McCurch out for another midfielder, or McCurch out for a high half forward, I am definitely keeping Sheasel because Sheasel will go back there for two weeks and then you can retrade Sheasel out um, almost during the buy or what. I don't know exactly after his buy, so, something or other like that. Uh, but also, if he isn't, um, but if they name another halfback, like a, I don't know if Hardiman was named last week. I need to just double check that or what role Hardiman was in last week. Let me just double check that quickly for you guys now. Um, teams, lineups, North Melbourne. They had Lazaro as sub. They had Hardiman on the bench here. So if they just go, yeah, if they name Hardiman as well there alongside, um, they named Sheasel half back there, but he played, I think, half forward anyway. So yeah, if they just bring in Mercurcha for another sort of half back, um, then I will be sort of inclined to, um, then I'll definitely be inclined to put, to trade out Sheasel because of his break even. Get him to another, I think another round 14 guy from memory. Yeah, probably another round 14 guy. And then um, go from there. Um, so yeah, even though we have a lot of round 14 guys on the bench here, I think that um, Jai Clark will probably be gone by round 14 as well. Um, so yeah, it would be, and I want to just see Seth Campbell. Is he round 14 or round 15? He's round 15, but it doesn't really matter with him as I don't really want to ever play him. So yeah, I'll probably hope to move on Jai Clark next week. 
um, as alongside someone else if I can um, to get an upgrade there as I do have 126k so hopefully I can move on say a Jeremy Sharp or maybe um, even upgrade like a Luke Jackson by then if um, if he still isn't scoring with uh, Sean Darcy um, there or maybe even I don't, I don't think it's time for Sweet yet but something like that um, as I think that'll work but uh, yeah, we're all. I'm watching heavily on the um, Harry Sheasel because if Harry Sheasel does um, not play in the end, um, then I just, no, I want to edit this trade here as I believe I just go here, here, and I know that this this won't work. But I want to go here, and I want to go Luke Ryan as well. I want to do that. So hopefully that works. No, nope, it doesn't. It doesn't want to work for me. Um, I guess I'll just uh, roll back the team, I guess, and show you the uh, trade, the other trade that I was looking at, and I think I had this trade set up for when, uh, when, my, when I was doing my last videos on the Tuesday night, the um, the trade targets and cash cows videos. I had this trade set up um, here, and it had 57k left over, so it would be a struggle next week with. Uh, Jai Clark and basically meaning that I have 157k to upgrade a rookie um, and you cannot really get anyone up there um, aside from maybe a Jeremy Sharp or something like that up um, so that would be the other trade is getting Luke Ryan in um, and getting also Zach Fisher still in I think still think Zach Fisher's role down there is set um, and the only um, thing is that Colby McCurcher and uh, Harry Sheezer will flip Possibly, but if they don't, um, if they go for another sort of defender half back, then I will definitely be trading out Harry Sheasel and doing this set of trades as Harry Sheasel is just going to lose money very, very quickly. He could lose 50k a week very quickly for the next two to three weeks, and suddenly you have an 850k guy off his buy, or maybe even a 900k guy off his buy since he's got two weeks to go before his buy. If you see here, look at this averaging basically 100, he's dropping 76k. Um, and say he drops, say he does a couple of ones, a uh, couple of 70s, that's going to turn into, oh, 70 would be about 55k here, and I would suggest another 50k here, that's, um, that is effectively 890k or 880k here, 880k for a sheasel, whereas I basically banked 100, uh, probably in that time, a good 70 points from Luke Ryan versus Harry Sheasel, as Luke Ryan goes 105, Harry Sheasel goes 70, or even 80, that's sort, of, um, that sort of 50 to 70 points. And then I've also banked 110K from Harry Sheasel dropping down. So that is sort of the conundrum this week, but I guess we will just, um, is, am I able to, uh, let's just see, edit this trade here, I think. Um, oh no, I'm gonna, I'll reset it just so that it shows the Campbell out one. Um, but yeah, that is basically the whole thought of this week is basically what are, what is North Melbourne going to do at the selection table? If I just go here, give me Seth Campbell, give me uh, Richard. And I think Richards is the one I want to go for just because of the low break even. He plays, um, they do play Adelaide this week. Um, but then he has Frio, Western Bulldogs, Melbourne, North Melbourne. Um, if he stays during the bye, that North Melbourne one could be handy in round 14 when we got all of those guys out. So even though he's a forward, I can shift guys into the midfield and I can shift guys into the defender line like a Nick Dacos or I think Bonner's out on that week. Um, I think round 14 is his buy. Let me just double check that for Bonner. Hopefully it's round 15. No, it's round 15. So that round 14 buy, um, I think it's round 15 that we might actually struggle given we have Dacos, Bonner and um, some other guys out. But um, round 14, we've got some guys out. And um, so yeah, I will be looking at that. Um, and I think Richards, if he stays, could be really, really valuable. As I think Richards is a much better, and I don't know his exact height, Joe Richards, but I thought he was like 6'1 or so. Um, let me just double check that because he sort of could feel that um, he's 177. He's actually tiny. So hmm, I think if he can do really, really well, then I think he still can hold. But we'll wait and see on that one, I guess. And then we can go Fisher here as Fisher should be able to make that trade work. There we go. Um, and yeah. Then we got Howes here. He potentially needs to go sometime soon as well, but he's got some really handy matchups. Has the West Coast matchup and then St. Kilda matchup, two positive matchups for him. So hopefully he can go 80-80 and then 80-80 will probably get his break even down again or a little bit down and he can reach 500K because when he starts reaching 500K to have a sort of 250K um, sort of upwards trend on another rookie because he would go down to say a 250K rookie at 500K, that's 250 banked. Put that on top of like a, 
um, a Jeremy Sharp, and even after the buy, that should get us up to the likes of a Tom Green or something like that, as Tom Green is 817k at the moment and still has a 133 break, even with two games to go before his buy. So that's sort of my thoughts with Blake Howes. And I could go to a rookie, hopefully, in the defender slot that um, actually is playing. And I also just want to check with um, with the likes of Zach Reed. He's got his buy in 14. Okay. Um, so, yeah, all my rookies basically have a buy in 14. So if I can get another rookie here, get these, get Clark and Howes off by then, or, uh, or Howes and Graham off to rookies that are actually playing, um, then it will help a little bit. It will suck a little bit that I have sort of... 15, I'll probably have 15 primos playing in sort of round 14 and 15, but I can supplement it with a couple of buy players. Uh, but yeah, that's sort of those uh, overarching themes, I guess. And then uh, midfield, I don't think it's changed this week. Still going with Steel, um, Butters, Bont, Dacos, uh, those two, same value. That goes there, and that goes there. Um, and then you got, yeah, uh, Bonner, Oliver, Sharp, and uh, Darcy Wilson. Darcy Wilson, I hope to flux, uh, sort of float to the, um, if I just swap these two actually at the moment, and um, I believe it's a Gorn VC as he has a later game in the day cost C. Uh, sorry, the Gorn C and the day cost VC is what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, that's that's the VC and C across, I think, both platforms at this point. Uh, Bono Clayton, uh, we talked about that. We talked about the bench there. Gorn C, as I talked about just then. Um, Jordan Sweet sounds to be back this week, has trained. Um, we don't know. They never stated if it was COVID or just an illness or just a bug or something like that. But he was out with illness last week. And yes, Vicentini had a good game, but we'll see on Thursday night and just hope that Sweet is back because Sweet being back basically... The difference is me playing Hugo Garcia or Jordan Sweet. And I'd rather play Jordan Sweet, especially after he's got this matchup against Hawks, who are currently playing well. Um, but he's averaging 81 at the moment. Um, Hawks are the the recommended meek is getting a lot of points, but he's also giving up a lot of points. So I think Sweet could do well there as well. And then he's also got um, North Melbourne, who Cherry's giving up quite a lot of points, if I remember correctly. Let me actually just double check these um these stats so I can give them to you rightfully and they're they're, they're correct. Um, let's just see L five I think is a better metric um given that that inclusive of this season alone. You'll see Hawthorne is plus twelve point five and where is North Melbourne? North Melbourne's actually minus uh zero point uh three three at the moment. But if we look at that, that is solely off Lloyd Meek having a shocker back a couple weeks ago. Um, so, and then also Blickards, who isn't really right. So I would say he's probably a plus two, plus three at the moment. And you can sort of see that this, and this is why I love this uh, new feature here. Plus eight, plus four, plus four in the last couple weeks as well. So I think he genuinely actually is a sort of a plus matchup for Ruckman. And minus 0.33 is a little bit off. Then we have Hawthorne here, plus 12.5. Um, ba, 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 ba. Then you have Brody Grundy. He went 72 against them. Wow. Um, but other than that, you can see here, Roll Marshall went absolutely ballistic. Tim English, pretty good. Tristan Cherry went pretty good. Um, Jared Witts went just below his average. So, yeah, you have one really bad. Um, I mean, you can cancel those two out, but then still, again, it's um, it's still a really good plus matchup, I would think. Uh, plus 40, plus 37, and 3. So it's still a plus 12 matchup, even when you reduce outliers. As you can see here, sorry, I'm probably covering the other one as well. But yeah, you can just see that that's probably a plus matchup as well for um, for the likes of Jordan Sweet. So that should be good. Hopefully he can go 80 or 90 there. Um, Heaney, Flanders, Dylan Moore, Jack McRae, Tom Powell, and Luke Jackson going a little bit strong here, um, which could probably be a downfall, I guess. Maybe I could put, um, maybe I could do something like, I mean, this is just me just mi mixing around a little bit. But there is also the thought next week of if Tom Powell isn't performing yet again um, to upgrade him uh, to someone. Um, but then again, that's also potentially up potentially up to uh, Sarong. If I could do that, that would be perfect. Um, 683K. That'd be kind of tough. I might have to go Hugo Garcia up 200K, 880. 880 plus the 126. Yeah, that should be able to do it if um, Tom Powell doesn't uh, drop down in price that much. And Garcia should offset that, to be honest. 126 break even between the two of them. That should, 131, sorry, between the two of them. That should offset almost. 
Um, and what's the wrong at 978 and he's got a 109. So yeah, that'll be tight, but we have a 20K advantage to start as well on that. So not too worried about that. And hopefully we can get um, that upgrade next week as that would be a very good upgrade, I know. And then we just have Sharp on the midfield rookies and then have Darcy Wilson here and Jordan Sweet and Closey sort of to upgrade. And I could start actually, and I could put Fisher in that sort of Darcy Wilson slot and upgrade Darcy Wilson to a sort of um, a premium defender like a Luke Ryan as well. And uh, Duggan, I think, are the top sort of guys. Holmes is in around that as well. But that sort of is my thoughts around it. I've gone a little bit over the time that I thought I would, so it might not come out at 12. This might come out at 1. But yeah, I think this side is all right. I think we can push towards top um, 4.5k, I think, this week with a good week. So yeah, I'm sort of, I, I'm not in the worst position. I'm sort of utilizing value at the moment, which isn't always the best option. I'd rather be going for Luke Ryan than a Zach Fisher. But because of my horrific cash, then that's sort of what has occurred. And that's sort of a lesson that we've uh, learned across this year. But anyway, that pretty much is the video there going through my A4 Fantasy team for uh, round 10. And I'll see you guys in the Supercoach team reveal. Hopefully um, that these will be uploaded at 12 p.m. and 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. for the uploads today. But I'll see you guys in that video. Bye, guys.